Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News and as requested by the comments in yesterday's episode, I probably should cover this old head up because a lot of comments out there were saying, Jake, you look gross, your bald head looks ugly. I do understand guys, but also I really want to clarify for today's first episode and our first story for today's episode of CSK News, I do also want to clarify guys, the Stewie 2K to SK Gaming roster has been confirmed. A few people out there, a few slim people like this comment on screen as well, thought it was a joke. Now he actually worded that in a, a kind of a, a mean manner, but I do want to prove to you guys, SK has confirmed Stewie 2K actually visiting the team himself. It's his first time actually in their house in North America as well. So yes guys, Stewie 2K has officially joined SK Gaming and then we'll talk about the rest of Cloud9 changes later on in today's episode. I also want to talk about though as well guys and breaking news out there, actually DreamHack had their own player boost broken into and they had several gaming chairs stolen from their facilities. Now you may be asking how is it possible to have gaming chairs stolen? Even the bigger question is though how do they have gaming chairs stolen? Valued over $20,000 guys and all of those gaming chairs, those Corsair gaming chairs were actually on their way to DreamHack Marseille's. If you guys don't know that tournament's going to be happening in about two weeks' time. And yes, so over 50 gaming chairs stolen somewhere out of DreamHack facilities. No one knows how or why, but whoever it was was an absolute genius because if you guys are new to the gaming scene, which I'm sure you guys are not, gaming chairs are actually worth a lot of money. So they got away with it for now with over $20,000 in gaming chairs. We'll find out sometime soon if they are caught. You would think it'd be pretty easy to find a, a guy out there with 50 random gaming chairs, uh, but hopefully they do get caught. And unfortunately for DreamHack, Marseille's, they might have to find a new supplier for their gaming chairs. But also in crazy news, thanks to all of you guys' feedback and all the great comments so far. Actually, sponsors reaching out to my channel. I'm going to take the first one for the next few videos, guys. Thank you to EtherealMCrash.io, the most trusted Ethereum gambling site out there. I'm going to link them down below in the, in the description, guys. You can see on screen as well, they are the most trusted Ethereum gambling site out there. And considering the whole seven-day Valve trade ban thing, I might as well promote this free sponsor. So if you guys want to use them, if you guys have any cryptocurrencies, are in of, of age, okay? Only if you guys are of age to actually do any gambling. They do an official gambling license, guys. And the best house edge in terms terms of edge for you guys, the users, the best house edge out there for any Ethereum gambling. So if you guys want to do that, their link is down below. And again, you guys support me very much. So thank you guys for understanding my sponsorships. But also moving on, guys, and bigger news out there, of course, we have Cloud9's newest and latest addition. And big surprise from Complexity, their IGL, who will be now IGLing for Cloud9, taking that role from Tark. That will be Complexity's former FNS. And also on top of that, guys, FNS, also with this video, I'll link down below for all of you. He did confirm that the Cloud9's owner, that was Jack, who not only released Stewie 2K from his contract without a buyout being required. He then went on and actually bought, bought out FNS from his contract. So really risky investment here from Cloud9, guys. They take the ex-CLG member FNS. If you guys remember, it was actually CLG now two or three months ago who disbanded their entire male roster and they've actually gone on sign for some time. So we now have FNS replacing on that roster apparently Stewie 2K. He will be the IGL as well. The only thing Cloud9 needs now in the future is of course an opera. Now I talked about this on live stream last night. There are so many rumors surfacing. Will Cloud9 go majority ex-CLG of of course, they have Tark, the ex-CLG member, now FNS. Will they actually assign as well Ricky, who has gone unsigned? He's formerly of CLG, and he is an opera. He could replace Skadoodle on that Cloud9 roster. Other rumors out there say Renegade is nifty. On top of that, guys, we could have maybe a Danish opera out there like Heroics Yugi. And I'm sure you guys can comment down below. There are a long laundry list of operas out there that I've guessed if Cloud9 is willing to buy out FNS's contract, they have plenty of money to spend, guys. Long list of options. And apparently, according to JDM, it's unlikely he could be joining the roster instead. That was the first initial rumor of course, JDM from Liquid would go to Cloud9. Apparently, that might be unlikely now, and there's a lot of options out there for who Cloud9's fifth member and their opper will be to replace Skadoodle. Now, for the time being, though, for ECS matches, it will be Skadoodle who stood in last night for the team, but he's still going to be inactive for the future, guys, and Skadoodle has yet to announce where he'll be playing next, and that was an absolutely huge change. First, SK Gaming's roster gets confirmed, FaZe Clan's roster is next, and now Cloud9 coming soon. We should have their fifth member and opper announced, hopefully, within, within a week or so. And if you guys remember, speaking of all those changes to all those SK Gaming gaming roster, Cloud9's roster, FaZe Clan's roster back about you know three weeks ago now when Symbol was actually first speculated to be joining the SK Gaming roster alongside Flamey. People were actually speculating the rumor of the buyout being $12 million. Everyone saying that was pretty an, a pretty extreme amount out there. Many people thought it was actually a joke or a troll and indeed it was. Now sources that decay actually, I'll link his article down below for all of you, lean towards more like $1.2 million. So maybe a bit of a, a decimal typo there. They actually forgot to draw the period over. Apparently the buyout was actually $700,000 for Simple, an additional $500,000 and half a million for Flamey to actually join SK Gaming. And of course, you guys can understand why they would not buy those two players for $1.2 million. Recently, the most, I guess you could say, the most rumored biggest buyout out there was Nico uh, to FaZe Clan for $400,000. Although Nico and FaZe Clan debate that it was actually far less than that. So either way, and now you guys understand why they couldn't pay $1.2 million for those players to be bought out. Of course, maybe it wouldn't be worth it seeing the success they've had so far on Na'Vi. On top of that, though, uh, I do want to talk about big news out there. Alleged Chinese super team forming out there. And why I want to deny 
these rumors, guys. I think we have yet to see any real time, uh, in any any near time in the future, to actually see a Chinese super team out there. As of right now, the rumors do surface that apparently Attacker and Summer from Flash Gaming will join up with two Vici Gaming members. If you guys do remember, it was it was actually probably a year ago or longer. Uh, we actually had VG Cyber Zen, our VG Gaming actually split off into two teams. So it was originally VG Cyber Zen. They stayed with that main roster and also added an additional roster called, I think it was actually VG Gaming. Now, one of those rosters actually disbanded completely, and we do apparently have a super a super team from the Chinese scene lining up. It'll be Attacker and, and since some are actually from Flash Gaming, uh, Zo King and Freeman from VG Gaming, and one fifth member, guys, from Flash Gaming's bench. That's actually Lovey. If you remember the controversy way back in the day, I want to say it was a few months ago, where Lovey was actually involved with the Flash Gaming's roster. He was still under contract, though, with this current team. They got mad at him. They benched him. They kicked the coach and another player as well for trying to be in, in, in ties and actually talking to other teams while they were under contract. We've seen this a lot in the past. Speaking of Heroic Yugi, remember he was actually formerly of Trick Esports. While he was actually playing for Trick Esports, he was talking with Team Heroic to actually sign him. Uh, Trick Esports, their owners found out about this. They got very angry. They ended up benching the guy. We've seen this a few times in players' history where it's kind of, you, you kind of have to judge the organization for really, for benching players, for talking to other teams, actually having a chance to talk about their futures. Is it really, is it worthy of benching these players? Lovey is one of those same guys. He was actually playing for a Chinese team and still in talks with other Chinese teams trying to, uh, for the future, they got mad at him. They benched him. He's now back though, guys. Apparently the Chinese super team though, two Flash Gaming players, two Vici Gaming players, and, a, and a, another Flash Gaming player who's on the bench. I don't think it's going to be a super team anytime soon. If you look at current results, guys, the only real results these Chinese teams have are from events like WESG. No really exclusive results or actually clarifying results from these teams. Yes, it's a Chinese super team and compared to other Chinese teams, but will they compete with North American or EU teams? I highly doubt it. And also very importantly for all you French fans out there, it does seem shocks his surgery and his recovery is going just as planned. So he will be back to actually starting again, starting to play CSGO by next week. As done by his Twitter post, guys, he is now well on the road to recovery and should be playing CSGO in about seven days or so. And again, that's right in the timeline when he had his surgery about a week ago, he said it'd be 10 to 14 days or about 10 days until he could play CSGO again. Everything does seem to be going well. And so for all of you guys who are waiting for that newest French roster, it should be expected probably about two months time. And again, there's still a huge debate as to who these guys are going to play with. As of right now, it's pretty much 95%, 99% guaranteed. It will be Shocks and Smiths with their IGL being, of course, existence from LDLC's bench. That trio, though, who's going to join them? Right now, current rumors out there say Zai Wu. He's finishing school in a couple months, as well as other players like RPK or Kenny if they want to leave their current rosters. There's a new French team on the rise, guys. We're going to have to wait till G2 Shocks, though, is on his road to full recovery. He'll be playing CSGO for the first time in a week or so, and we'll see if he actually maintains how good he was. And very lastly, I do want to cover this, although it's really old CSGO news. I know you guys saw this many days ago. LGB actually was going to rebrand their CSGO roster. Uh, actually, I think it was over a year ago now. They were formerly known as Planet Odd. They were first LGB. They then changed their name out of nowhere to Planet Odd. They've actually reverted back to the LGB tagline. Of course, if you guys remember their stickers, I've actually bought a couple of them because they're just super cool stickers. They are now back to the LGB name, guys. Don't expect anything big soon or, or more stickers in the future because if you guys forgot, they only have a female CSGO roster. So currently right now, no female teams get stickers and there's still no announcements for a male CSGO roster in the future. Yes, they've actually rebranded back to LGB, but that was all the hype around it. No real big announcements coming from them for, for now. I'm not sure if they're going to expand in other esports out there, but CSGO male team still is yet to happen. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you guys hopefully in a couple days. And also make sure to remember, guys, if you want to actually watch my live stream, especially Friday, I'm going to be opening 500 sticker capsules on live stream, if not maybe a thousand. You guys have to actually hit the notification bell because a lot of you guys actually cannot see when I go live unless you turn notifications on. As always, I hope you guys all enjoy my name is Jamie Rock. You, that was way too fast. I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.